So hello, I'm just showing you a little bit here how we can take an existing drawing and where those drawings actually already have some drilling information. I'm using that drilling information to place my additional uh, objects. So here, for instance, I believe we have most likely between these two, we have a small wire duct. Now, once these wire ducts are placed, I can stretch them to go to the extent because the holes are actually the holes that have been designated for this. And I can now decide how long I want this. So I want this exactly to that stretch. I can now also go and stretch all my items to be exactly right to the edge. Uh, so here, if I want this to be up to the edge. I can just, you know, match these. There we go, like this. This one go to the edge. And it's fantastic how quickly this actually goes and how quickly I can take something, just stretch it out to the extreme here, click on it, just click where it actually goes. This one here will go to here. Maybe I'll, I'll stretch it up to here. This one here will be stretched up there. So you're basically very quickly adapting these individual DIN rails that have been placed earlier just based on the holes. And there you go, you have the uh, new alignments. And of course, you can stretch everything out a little bit further than the holes themselves, let's say right to the middle here. And we'll adjust it as required a little bit later. So I'm not just going to do it very quickly like this, quick and dirty. And I'm going to start placing my components. So here the components are from a drawing that will be generated uh, straight out of our Cogineer. So technically what I did is I created a couple of macros, right? Here we can see a couple of pages with the different macros. These are the schematics. And to each schematic, I associated a macro. Some of these are actually relative to some options. Let's say the AT option has uh, a couple of drawings that will get in. And the RS option has a couple of additional options that can come in. Okay. Uh, this, for instance, is like a second frequency drive that will be added onto the very first page here in this area. Now, the Cogineer, when we run it, works like this. So you start with a project that primarily has nothing but your regular pages, you know, like a legend page, maybe a table of content, and nothing else. And you go in here and you start the Cogineer project builder. The Cogineer project builder will ask you what project do you want to edit? So that's the project you want to edit. And these are basically the configuration tools I have. The BTR, I want to generate a BTR. R stands for Roland here, BT is another option. And I just hit the generate button. If I check both of these options, I will get the AT option and the RS option. So basically that's the maximum, um, including the, the drawings that we just talked about. So it just generated these four different pages. You can see that this RS option is in the R, AT option is in, and of course, everything that's actually linked to it, because at one point in time, we have a contact here on this page that also is in, and it would have not been in there if I didn't select the AT option. Same thing for this page here. This relay here is in because I actually selected the AT option. So now that I have my regular e-plan drawing in schematics, I can run the reports. That means my build material, my wireless, my cable diagram, my terminal diagram, everything is simply generated in one single click. You can see here very quickly, it just goes and picks all the information I have within the schematics and generates starting here with the first one, which is a kitting list, right? A very simple list. It also puts together all kinds of other things like um, a, a detailed uh, production here for uh, my different DIN rails. You can see here all the drill holes that are based on what we see there. Uh, another thing is the ducts and the rails, the length of all these ducts and rails, I just actually made larger. Those will be updated as we move forward. Uh, I can go into uh, my wire list. So I have now a detailed wire list, except I don't have any length at the moment for most of these wires because they haven't been placed yet or the components haven't been placed. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to concentrate very quickly on just the uh, basics. So I'm going to just close these other uh, items and I'm going to keep my panel and inside this panel, I'm going to go straight into my panel here and I will manually place most of these components that haven't been placed yet. Of course, what I will use is here a small activation of the filter to find only the components that actually go in here and I start placing them. So the very first thing I'm going to go and place is probably here a PLC. So if I actually drill into it, you can see the object is right there. So I'm going to go just drag and drop it and try and place it here. So it will stick to my mouse and I can just place it there. So of course, if I went and made things a little bit too long, you will see it right away here and you can adapt it very quickly. Now we are in the perfect digital twin. So I can say, let's go no longer than this tip here. And we just adjusted the length of that thin rail. So if you have something more fancy, like let's say the terminals, you can go and say, okay, I want my terminal TV too. I want it there, the whole strip. So you just align it yourself, boom. It's gonna go in place there. And I can continue on and on, and I will basically fill out this panel. It won't take too long. And I will be able to place most of these components on this here and just stretch it out. Um, now, of course, some of these components are very simple uh, components like the power supply here from, uh, from here, just place it there. Uh, other components uh, like the CRM, that's basically just a relay, just pick the relay, just place it there. Um, if I want, I have some drives. So when I place the drives, um, I have to consider something interesting because we have to consider some mounting clearance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily stretch these a little bit out here and see how far and how much space I need actually to place these drives because I have two drives to place. And when I do place a drive, there is, and you will see some area around it that I have to consider, which are basically protected areas. So I don't want to go too close here to other components. So maybe let's put it there, right? And then we'll see for the next one if it actually goes. And we can see that in this particular case here, whatever was selected in terms of the height is most likely a little bit too high. Now, looking through the uh, individual um, uh, documents I found on, on the PowerFlex, I actually saw that we are allowed to move these uh, around and have them sitting next to each other. So that is possible. So now the other thing you wanna do is maybe go back and move this whole thing a little bit down so you can, in e plan, just go and move this, maybe align it with this here, and that makes it just perfect. Now, obviously here, I'll have to readjust them for the next component that I'm gonna be placing there. So maybe some circuit breakers, CV1, CV2, CV3, whichever I, I wanna place at the top there, and I can see where I can place them. Some of these devices are actually uh, fairly big. Some of them are smaller. I can just drag and drop them. And here, of course, I have to be careful not to go to the uh, edge, but you will see when I place it, it automatically aligns. And the same thing, you can see I'm a little bit too far up, so I'll have to clean that up or question myself how I do with my wires at the very top. You can see the digital twin, how precise it is. We are down to millimeters trying to squeeze this in and, and figure out where the best position is for each of these components. So anyways, I can go on and on like this, show you. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna stop it here. The interesting thing uh, that uh, you may be interested in is that ePlan, as I move and I progress forward, I can actually have the wires already routed and I can see uh, where the, the wires uh, can be placed or routed if they are, uh, if, if there is a possible connection. We can see here, for instance, that it, it can't reach out for this one here because I have to stretch this out. There are a couple of things I have to correct. I will do these corrections uh, and, and move forward from that point. But it's quite interesting uh, how, how precise we are working here and we are building the, the panel itself. So if you wanna see more about this, uh, yeah, I'll be presenting a little bit more on my YouTube channel uh, shortly. So come and see us, Roland Jung from ePlan. Thank you.